Yeah, the task uh, that we're doing, it has several different um, levels to it, several different layers and, pro and stages to it. So we begin, first I begin by even just introducing the topic of phrasal verbs. All right, well, good morning, everybody. Today we are going to look at something called phrasal verbs. Okay, phrasal verbs. And why they're called phrasal verbs is because they're more than one word. They're a special kind of verb that takes two or more pieces and puts them together and then creates an expression in English. And sometimes it becomes like an idiomatic expression. So what they are are a combination of a main verb plus a preposition. So what's an example of a main verb? You can just shout it out. What are some main verbs in English? Some verbs. Catch. Catch. Great. Thanks, Will. What else? Shout them out. Catch. Take. 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 More. Come. Come. Good. Good one. That's got a lot of phrasal verbs. Go. Go. Excellent. What are examples of some prepositions? Uh, two. two. On. 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 Into. Into. In. Good. Separate. They're off. different. Um, off. Off. Uh, at. So then I give a description that it's a main verb plus a preposition combined together, or two prepositions, or sometimes even three. And then they combine together to create a unique new expression, and sometimes it's an idiomatic expression. Now what happens with these phrasal verbs is you combine them together and they create new expressions a lot of times. So let's look at go. Go to, go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go up. Go to, go up. up. Go up. Up. Out. And how about go, go on. out with, go on. Okay, so let's just look at those for the moment. Go up, go to, go out, go out with, go on. These all combine to mean a separate, separate expressions. And so if you get the little word wrong, if you get the preposition wrong, it can change the whole meaning. Or if you hear it from somebody else saying it or in a movie, you can get the whole expression wrong if you don't know how they're going together. So go up. Anybody know what go up means? When, how would you use that? Go up the stairs? Yeah, go up the stairs. Perfect. Okay. Ah, oh, I've got 20 stairs in my house. Got to go up the stairs. Good. Then in stage two, I introduce the project and what they, um, I will give them some samples that they, that they go home and they look up on homework, for homework and then they report back the next day and they talk with them, each other, and teach them to each other in groups. All right, great. So you've got a really good idea of what these are now. And I have a sheet for you that I want you to take home and read tonight. And this will be for your phrasal verb presentation project. And everybody will be doing two presentations during the course of the term. Next, then I introduce the project where what we do is um, I give them several examples using the word look, for example. Look into, look up, look down on, look down, um, and lots of different examples. They go home and they do a little research on that. And the handout that I give them explains the project and how they're going to do it. Um, OK, so these are all the different ways that you can do your second one later on for a grade. I want two phrasal verbs, and I want you to make some kind of connection between them. Can does anybody have any questions about that? Um, and what the project then is, is they each sign up for two phrasal verbs uh, presentations. And I should say that one of the uh, tasks that we do in Oral Skills 4 is they give a series of four presentations on different topics. One of them is the phrasal verbs. We have our first phrasal verb presentation today. We have Farah's going to come and talk about it. So give it up for Farah. Woohoo! Uh, hi, all. My phrasal verb for today is meko. Uh, the definition for, for it is uh, to fix something or doing extra that you missed or did the drawing. 
the example part is I missed the test yesterday because I was sick. Can I make it uh, make it out? They their homework then is to prepare for the project is to go home, research the phrasal verb, and then they come back um, and on their day they give a little five minute presentation. They come to class five minutes early, put the information on the board, and what the information is is uh, the phrasal verb. They give a definition in their own words and that's a very strict requirement that they have to transform it from a dictionary definition to putting it in their own words and then give two example sentences. Nicely done, good work. Okay, so just quickly, um, this is not a phrasal verb here. I put makeup on, that's the noun, right? But it comes from making up. So I make up my face every day and that's the example that Farah gave at the end, which was perfect. And then we might just want to say, um, I put makeup on, just one more little word here, for my cousin's wedding. Let's add that, for. My only concern that sometimes gets to be a problem is students sometimes come in with wrong information or something that isn't actually a phrasal verb or they make a mistake in one way or another. But because I, what, so what I've built in to deal with all that is an ability to just, I come in and just clean things up a little bit afterwards or if I feel sometimes people's pronunciation is hard to understand and so the other students don't really understand what they were saying. So I might help clarify in that case. Uh, and here's me and uh, can we uh, leave this subject or change it? And the other example, what time do you get off work? And that and here's me and uh, what time do you finish the work or leave? That's it. Do you have any questions? Everybody know how to use this? Ryan, do you have a question? <laughs> what are things, what are something you might get off of? A car? Bus. You get off of a bus. What else? What else do you get off of? Train. Train. Good. Also? What else? A plane. Nice. Good. And then the last part of it is they work with a partner and they write dialogues. Uh, and in the dialogues, they have to use at least four of the phrasal verbs that have come up so far. And then they write these dialogues with each other and they have a few minutes in class to work on that, maybe 15, 20 minutes. And then uh, either that period or the next period, then they perform them. So now what we're going to do is we'll move to the part of the class. What I want you to do is Take the phrasal verbs. Let's make a list of the ones that we have going so far. And I want you to start writing dialogues that you're going to use for quiz number two, please. So which ones have we got so far? Which ones have we done so far? Just shout them out. Get off. Get off, good. You can shout out your own. What else? Makeup. Makeup, good. That was Farah's. Look forward. And what goes with look forward? Two. I'm putting in a sentence. Two. Good. Oh, great. And what else? Look for. Look for. Okay. I'm looking for something. Um, I'm looking forward to seeing you. I'm looking forward to my brother coming for Thanksgiving. What else? And then these are student and teacher graded. And so the students um, who are in the audience at that time, they are required to listen to the, um, listen to the dialogue, write down which four were used, um, and did they use them correctly. And then if so, then I say, OK, what's the grade? And then they call out 100%. So what I'd like you to do, please, is find a partner. If possible, find somebody who speaks a different language as you, which would be fantastic. I know it's tricky in this class. And please start writing dialogues. You need to do, just like we did the first time, four. You have to put at least four of them. You can use them from the whole list, from the beginning um, until the words that we have had even through today. Um, try not to use the exact same ones that you used in your first dialogue. Please try to do other practice, getting practice with other ones. And also, please try to work with somebody who you haven't worked with already for the first time. Looking, look for. So, talking about uh, looking. 
Where not is the movie take place? Different auxiliary verb? What the movie? No, no, the verb where, where? but not is different auxiliary verb for questions. Not where is, where does. Does. Yeah. Where does the movie where does the movie take place? Yeah. There you go. Where does the movie take place? I'm looking forward to go to Portland to have fun. With my friends. Uh, to have fun. Yeah. Uh, with my friends. Uh, okay. And this one. And there is a party in my house tonight will you come just F and I'm Charlotte just put C oh, okay. C is me right. mm -hmm. so I can say uh, Which one can I say? Let's get now. The bus now. <coughs> Fish. A works. Now, what I'd like you to do is get into your groups for your conversations. And we're going to get ready to do the phrasal verb presentations today. Hello, this is Katrina. Oh, hi, it's Randy here. Um, do you want to go to a party uh, tonight at 9 o'clock? Oh, that's cool. I'd love to, but I will um, take care of my little brother until my parents come back. Then I will um, get over with my homework. After that, I will, see, I will put my makeup on. When I set up everything, I will come. Oh, sounds good. I'm looking forward to seeing you. Oh, okay. Thank you. Bye. Bye. All right. So by the end of the term, then they have about 60, more or less 60 phrasal verbs that they've been playing around with and really get their hands dirty with. Okay, everybody. So what were the four phrasal verbs they used? Farah. Take care. Take care. Well, not just take care, but take care oh. of. Oh. Good, right, because that's what, remember we said, decided that take care isn't actually a phrasal verb, but take care of works. Okay, another one. Somebody else. Get over. Get over, right. Get over, and she's used not just get over, but get over with. Good, get over, meaning to finish her homework. What else? Make up. Make up. She, but she used makeup as a noun, but she did Looking use, she surrounded to. it but with a phrasal verb. Look forward to. Oh, that's a different one. Hold that thought. What put about the on. makeup one? Put on. Put uh, makeup on, right. Put on makeup, put makeup on. Exactly. Perfect. Okay, and now, Kyle, what did you say? Look forward to. Looking forward. She, I'm looking forward to seeing it. All right. So did they use them correctly? Yeah. All right. What do we give them for their score? 100%. Okay. All right. Who's going next? Who's up? Probably, if I were in an EFL setting, I would just use the media even more. I would probably show more film, film clips, songs, um, newspaper articles, podcasts, and all that sort of material. And then, since they won't be able to grab quite as much of it from the surroundings that they're in. And um, just kind of keep weaving that back in over and over. And because I think they need the repetition so much with these to really integrate them and incorporate them, then um, just keep coming up with new ways to, new materials to, that highlight these phrasal verbs. Now very quickly before we finish, I have a little bit of a song to play for you. And there are some phrasal verbs right in the chorus and in some other parts. See if you can catch them and grab them, okay? Well, I think one piece of advice I would give to people wanting to incorporate projects in their classes, first of all, try it. It's, it's so worth it. There are just so many benefits for the students. You get them up and moving around. It's not what they're always expecting. And sometimes that's a good thing and sometimes it's a bad thing. But um, they, it's, it's a surprise. It's, 
it's not just memorization. You keep coming at it from different ways, and I think what it allows students, you know, a lot of students have very different learning styles in different ways, and so by coming at it from different points of view, so sometimes you're memorizing, sometimes you're writing dialogue, sometimes you're identifying it in a movie, sometimes you're hearing it in a song, sometimes you're reproducing it, um, then you kind of get more accessibility to more students. You, you, they, more people have a, an ability to tap into it. Um, and I would say just try it. Projects every time, I mean I'm having so much fun with this and every term I add some new piece to it. Uh, I think this way is effective because um, it uh, can help us to learn more and more and it's uh, a very interesting way to, to teach and uh, uh, we, it, it help us to practice and uh, doing a good job, not in classes, not just out of classes. That's what we can uh, talking with uh, American people uh, very fluently and uh, uh, bravely. Yeah, it uh, can be nice, nice yeah. way. I think one, uh, another benefit really is that they end up, um, there's so much out there and they don't really, they, it will just wash over them and they will very often, especially at the level four that I'm teaching, they will, they're trying to integrate so much information at one time that they will just kind of ignore it or not realize that it's happening. And so as Caleb Cateno has talked about, teaching awareness is one of our, our great goals in language teaching. And so that to me, if I can give my students skills that they can then take with them outside of the classroom, I mean, I can have them learn vocabulary and give quizzes and all this, and then they can maybe ma master it briefly. But if they can actually find the language pieces that we're looking at out in actual usage and then be able to start using them and communicate with them and finding more and more, and once they do have this awareness that this exists, it perks up their ears because now they know better what to listen for when they're not in my classroom. So I try to give them skills and activities basically that help practice these skills in the classroom so that then they can take that out because that's my goal for my students period is just I'm not going to be there after nine weeks for them and maybe they'll have another teacher maybe they won't but I want them to get some skills that they can then take with them and something they have like a little gift to take with them and use in all of their learning for forever. <laughs>